primal terror, insane fear, the breath of death right on the back of your neck. When you know you can't run, only one whiff separates you from death, only the wish of a higher being. If he wishes it, you die, and you won't even notice, you won't even blink, literally, for before you is the unseen elder. But who is that? Some otherworldly vampire whose very existence defies logic, powerful beyond belief. You can only see him if he wants you to. Faster than light, stronger than a titan, and practically immortal. If you bring the right gift and kneel the right way, then he will probably reward you with a brief conversation. Or again, he will kill you. Just because, why not? Recluse, loner. It is unlikely that he feels fear for who or what in this world could ever threaten him. Unless there is another one like himself, then why does he stay in this cave and only a few people in the whole world even suspect his existence? What drives him? What is his purpose? Who are vampires basically? How did they appear on the continent? And how did they settle in this world? That are some questions. One much more complicated than the other. And to each of them, well, there has to be an answer. Let's try to find them. Let's try to uncover the secrets of the great being called the Unseen Elder. You're on the Old Witch channel. We thank you guys for the support and joining our Patreon. And we encourage you to keep doing that. Do pop a bottle of Two Saint Red anyway. And even if you think you know everything about the Unseen Elder, we'll definitely try to surprise you. First, let's outline the limits of what we're going to look for. It is worth understanding that the Unseen Elder is not the name of any one vampire. It's more of a title, a certain status that a bloodsucker of a certain age and power receives. So that means there are at least a few Unseen Elders on the continent. According to the Higher Vampire Regis, all Unseen Elders are completely unique. Each has their own personality and habits. They differ in appearance and hide from the world in different ways. This means that the Witcher universe is populated by beings of truly divine power. Monsters against whom nothing might work, and nothing will work, most definitely. And any of them can hide just around the corner, in an abandoned crypt, a basement, or some inconspicuous cave. They are like dormant volcanoes, harmless to human civilization while slumbering. But once they wake up, kingdoms might plunge into a bloody abyss of death. How do you protect yourself from what you cannot see, hear, or touch in any way? The question is kind of rhetorical. Human civilization lives right on top of a huge bomb, and at any moment, it might get triggered. It is good that this bomb is, so to speak, in sleep mode. However, even though we know that there are many unseen elders, there is some information about only one of these individuals, precisely the one who settled in the caves of Hengate in Tusei. From here on in this video, the word unseen elder will be used to refer exclusively to this incredible being to this incredible vampire. The Unseen Elder, like all vampires of the continent, is not a native of this world. Along with the intelligent and beast-like bloodsuckers, he was born in an entirely different place, on another planet, under other stars. It all happened during the Conjunction event, when the continent was flooded with all kinds of monsters from completely incompatible planes of existence. Very little is known about those times. But using scraps of information from different sources, we can still come to some conclusions. The first clue lurks in the scrolls concerning the Unseen Elder in the Gwent trading card game, where there are the following lines. In the caverns beneath Two Sen, an Aeon's old vampire patiently awaits the next conjunction of the spheres. His brethren call him the Unseen Elder, and mortals, well, one cannot name what one does not know to exist. The Unseen Elder craves not power, wealth, nor even blood. His sole desire is to return to the world from which he has long been exiled. For centuries, he has watched the gate between worlds that now stands close to him. While well, the main information here is that the Unseen Elder was exiled from his home world. In fact, that means that the event of the conjunction of the spheres was neither a disaster nor a salvation for the vampire civilization. Such a powerful race who lived on some planet survived the Great Conjunction unscathed, and the continent was something like a new hunting ground for vampires, a potentially habitable territory. At first, unwanted vampires were driven out, and later other individuals 
began to go to the continent, those who were too cramped in the previous world. Thus, the continent was populated by bloodsuckers who remained under the new stars even after the conjunction cataclysm was over, and those who were forcibly expelled from their home world. Among the latter, there was our two saints unseen elder. The second clue concerns what the unseen elder might have been exiled for, and here it all comes down to the armor that Geralt of Rivia can find in the caves of Hen Gate in Toussaint. Is it the armor of the unseen elder himself? Why would such an incredibly powerful vampire need a suit of armor and a sword? Well, the answer to this question can once again be found in the Gwent trading card game. In the image of the Hen Gate sword card, we see that it is held by the hand of a vampire, and the description says, that a person struck by the sword cannot survive. Even a small wound will cause bleeding, very similar to powerful vampire magic. Also, it is noticeable in the picture that the sword is definitely held by the hand of a creature that is engaged in some sort of large battle with spears and halberds in the background. The vampire who holds the sword is the Unseen Elder. This is hinted at by the image of the Unseen Elder done in the Hengate armor from the same Gwen game, that is, the red armor that is the property of the Unseen Elder. These plates are hardly necessary for the Unseen Elder in a battle with humans, but they will surely help the vampire to get additional protection from the attacks of his own kin, and a sword that deprives its victim of blood would be best suited in a battle with vampires only, simply because the blood is their life force, no matter how powerful they are. It is by being deprived of blood in the body that a higher vampire can die as happened in the case of Detlef. In his home world, Unseen Elder faced powerful opponents, the rulers of the vampire race probably. He started a real war, and he lost that. However, he was not sentenced to death for this, but was forced to leave his home world. On the continent, the Unseen Elder was one of the most powerful vampires. He gained a special status, and basically subjugated the vampires of Toussaint. Initially, he was actively settling into his new domain, as evidenced by the medallion around his neck. Altars with a sign in the shape of this medallion are scattered throughout the wine region. It means that to the first people who settled there, the Unseen Elder was something like a deity. They prayed to him and brought him gifts. This tradition was so strong that it survived even into the days of the Witcher Geralt of Rivia, when the Unseen Elder has been dormant for centuries. To this day, some people still pray at these altars. Fear of the Almighty is instinctive, it's been passed down through the generations. The power of the Unseen Elder is also evidenced by the painting on Hengate's wall. This painting was drawn by a human hand, a hand that depicted the Unseen Elder in his more powerful form, with his bat-like wings spread out, a hand of a zealous follower or a slave. Now, moving on, we can think about humans as slaves to vampires in more detail. The vampires originally considered humans to be prey. They treated them like cattle, they bred them in cages, created reservations for them, conducted research on them, even recording their results so that it would be easier to tame the humans in the future. Two in-game books in The Witcher 3 Blood and Wine DLC are very precise about how vampires originally treated humans. The first one is called Human Husbandry and Care, and the second is called Battery Cage vs Free Range Humans. They begin with the following words. In recent decades, many of us have come to believe that a much more effective way of obtaining good quality human blood than hunting individuals is their systematic, controlled husbandry. The most important aspect of raising human livestock is to provide the herd with conditions that, on the one hand, guarantee their survival, but on the other hand, do not extend too far beyond the minimum needed for that survival. That's quite telling, basically. The higher vampires, led by unseen elders, literally ruled over some territories of the continent in those times. They treated the first humans, the ancient settlers that is, as livestock. Only instead of milk, they gave vampires blood. They practiced two variants of human care. The first one was more rigid but reliable, the so-called battery cage. Humans were kept in captivity, in large cages, the communal ones. They were provided with two meals a day. The composition of this diet was determined by the taste features of the blood the vampires wanted to achieve. The brood was made up of males, who survived better in such conditions. But they were always joined by several females for stable reproduction. 
The females were treated better than the males so that their offsprings were healthy and could grow into quality blood donors. All people were given access to air, sleep, food and water. With good masters, humans were well fed and hardly cried out, while with bad ones, humans quickly became thin, sick and died, and their blood was not delicious. With low hemoglobin value, the second method of human cultivation was called free range. Its essence was to give the herd the illusions of freedom. Humans were placed in their everyday environment called villages. These villages were very well controlled by vampires, who ensured that the villages prospered. They protected the people in these villages from various dangers, providing the humans with quality goods. They became sorts of village mayors. In return, humans began to love their rulers. They were happy and fed, they could build their lives, and they even willingly gave their blood. And some particularly zealous followers experienced something akin to carnal excitement. When the vampire drank their blood, it made that blood taste even better. And everyone was happy with that state of affairs. It was the unseen elder vampires who created that structure, led their race to ascendancy and kept the order. But at one point, it just ended. So far, there is no information or even a clue as to when exactly this happened. Most likely, the vampire order did not collapse at once and only under the influence of several factors emerging at the same time. The first factor was that people were developing very rapidly. Under favorable conditions, their craving for knowledge grew stronger and stronger, and their intellect was growing stronger and stronger as well. Vampires began to attach themselves mentally to individual human beings. Humans turned out not to be the soulless livestock that the bloodsuckers had formed their opinion of earlier, and there was a split in the vampire society, for there were many sympathizers especially among the new vampire generations, who called for abandoning the turning of humans into livestock. At the same time, the unseen elders were letting the situation out of their hands more and more. These mighty perennial vampires were tired of the challenges of the new world and burned just as wildly with the desire to return home. This was especially true of the Toussaint unseen elder, who remembered the place where he had crossed the boundary of the worlds during the conjunction of the spheres. He arrived at the very cave where he had first set foot in this world and simply waited. Everything else but the desire to return home had lost its meaning for him. And the third factor is the essence of man. Feeling real freedom, people began to build cities, create armies and fight vampires. They just stopped being that cattle, that livestock, and the vampires did not want to subdue them. It made little sense, and without the help of the unseen elder, the human population, which had grown so large, could have become genocidal, so the vampires were forced to choose their fate. They needed to either hide and seek out lone victims, or blend into human society, assimilate, become invisible, and draw blood by deception. Each has chosen his own path. Stupid and aggressive beasts like vampires turned into monsters, hunting everything alive. In the end, we can see that everything points to the fact that blood is indeed important to the vampires. Even though in the book saga, the vampire Regis says that blood is not necessary for the higher species to survive and compares it to regular human alcohol. But the reality is different. We see that vampires are willing to take great risks for blood, that blood makes vampires stronger and the lack of blood kills vampires. So Regis' words are worth questioning at the very least. But the division did not end there for some vampires wanted to remain in the lands of Toussaint. Other chose to seek a better life. Three tribes were created from a single powerful community, Tedet. Vampires went east to Zerikania, Emeron. Vampires that chose to seek a better life in Ophir and Zanzibar, Karasham. Vampires who stayed in their original lands, Toussaint, the Northern Kingdoms and Novigrad. Gradually, the number of vampires decreases. They are getting weaker and weaker, and there are more and more stupid and beast-like ones. Those who have not assimilated are exterminated by witchers and sorcerers. Those who have adapted and have been discovered, they end up the same way. The continent has never been able to become a true second home for this race. As for the Unseen Elder, he is the one we started this story with, and he is the one we'll end it with as well. A powerful creature, immortal, most likely.
and with a human-like consciousness. That is the true problem, by the way. The unseen elder is just bored, he's tired, and he wants quiet and peace. The only goal left in his life is to return home under his native sky. For that, he gave up everything else. The only thing in his thoughts and in every millimeter of his flesh that remained necessary to him was home, only home. The unseen elder has returned to the cave where he first saw the continent and is waiting for the great gate to open again. He can wait a long time, almost for an eternity. For him, a year, a decade, or an entire century is just a sound, a truly insignificant thing. And to achieve the goal of a lifetime, you can probably wait a little longer. The unseen elder will only act when someone dares to threaten his mission. Then he won't give the enemy a chance. Mm-mm. Until then, he will just wait for the moment when something will change. He remembers his past. He is pleased to be bowed before. He knows his kin are all over the world in Zirikania and Ophir. And a strange Zirikanian stone called Hackland may remind the Unseen Elder of his lost kin. But only for a moment. For the Unseen Elder, there is only the future and his all-consuming great purpose. A goal familiar to every ordinary man. He wants to go home. Well, as for you guys, you are already home. So are our patrons, without whose support we would make Witcher videos on the channel much less often. Many thanks to everyone for supporting our little channel. Do support our work on Patreon and via direct sponsorship right here on YouTube and we will continue to give you guys some new content and continue to develop. Give us your likes, click the bells and write in the comments what do you think of this video. We try to collect all the bits of information and put them together in the most accurate picture with a small number of logical assumptions. Yes, there is a little bit of the author's thoughts in this video and attempts to explain certain facts. We certainly hope we haven't gone overboard. Perhaps you don't think so. Write about that in the comments too. Feel free to use timestamps if needed. Anyway, thanks to each one of you for watching and see you next time when the Old Witcher speaks once more.